got a brisket on. But before we got to this point, we had to modify this cooker and season it. And that's what we're gonna learn how to do today on Barbecue with Franklin. I'm Aaron. Today we're gonna be working on this offset cooker. It's also called the stick burner. It's called the stick burner because it doesn't use gas assist, it doesn't have propane, natural gas, it doesn't have any electrical elements. It's only fire that goes in here and that's the way it ought to be. And one of the things we're gonna be modifying today is we're gonna drill a hole here. We're gonna actually put a decent thermometer on because you can't really cook unless you know how hot you're cooking at. We're gonna open this deal up. Kinda try to eyeball how much room a brisket's gonna take up. It's gonna be right about here. And then we're gonna look at it, and if we're doing a three inch stem, we want it to be about an inch, inch and a half above the grate, because that would be right in the middle of a brisket. Kind of eyeball it right about here. Come over here. Our brisket came about up to here. So we're gonna drill a hole right about here. We'll take a little Sharpie, make a little dot there so we don't mess anything up. And let's get a drill and drill away. Let's do this. We've got a drill. Any old drill will work fine. It'd be easiest if you had a hole saw kit. And thank goodness I do have one. This is gonna work out really good. This is our thermometer. It's a three inch stem because we've got a pretty small cooker. That's a half inch NPT thread. So we're gonna find something that's big enough for that to fit through. I believe it ought to be this one. It's a one inch hole saw. So this is just the right size. So we're gonna get our little mandrel on there. Get this thing. And there we go. Let's go drill a hole. So we're gonna drill this holio right here. Kind of start off. Don't touch that because it's hot. Ow! We're gonna add a thermometer. It's in the wrong spot. There's several different kinds you can get. This cheaper one here is about $20. So most likely, this is gonna be the easiest one to find. You can get this at, at national chain stores across the country. These are the kinds that I really prefer. It's a Tell True. It's a really good one. These cost about 50 bucks. And this is kind of considered to be the creme de la creme. This is an Ashcroft. The benefit to an Ashcroft is you can calibrate it. It has a set screw on there so you can constantly make sure that it's reading exactly the way you want it to. Although I think these get a little off pretty quick, so I do prefer the tell trues. I've never had a tell true get off and I've been using these things for a long, long time. But for this cooker, we're gonna do the old Country Barbecue Pits Smoker and Grill 3 inch temperature gauge. All right, so here's our thermometer. We've got our hole drilled. <clears throat> We're gonna unscrew this nut. If you order one of these things online, be really, really careful that you order this nut if you need it, because they don't come with it, and I've ordered a bunch of these things and not had the nut to go with it. Fortunately, I can get around it pretty easily, because, well, I have a little shoppy shop here. We'll kind of poke that thing through. Thank goodness the hole fits just fine. You don't want to get this thing crazy tight. For this, there you go. Problem solved. Temperature gauge is, is between the meat and the heat. So you know it's going to be cool over here. It's always going to be hotter here. You can't burn anything up if you're paying attention to it. And it's right at meat level. You want to make sure that you don't turn it by the gauge. Because if you do, you'll throw off the calibration. And you just want to leave it as simple as possible and just not even mess with it. So that's a perfect placement for a thermometer. Yeah. All right, so now that we've got this thing modified, we're gonna burn it out. We're gonna get it seasoned, if you will. And the reason why we do that is because there's oils, there's paint and all this nasty stuff in there. So we need to burn it out to make it safe for food. In the purest form here in Texas, I'm gonna light this fire from shoveling out coals from an existing fire. Let's do this. Hot coals. Mm. 
Fortunately, I have the luxury of shoveling coals from other coal beds. But if you don't, you can always use charcoal and use a, a charcoal chimney and get it started, shovel them in there, and then throw some wooden chunks in there. Mm. All right, so now that I've got some wood chunks here on the coal bed, we're gonna let this thing sit about 250, 300 degrees. And how do you know how hot? New thermometer. We're gonna just let this thing ride until it doesn't smell like burning paint anymore. Delicious. Did you happen to see our episode on trimming a brisket? Well, if not, somewhere on the screen, there's something to click on. Click on that.